and welcome back to the video series Dedicate Show on MTV, where it's better to make mental notes than actual notes. Some wise words from Tatcha in this episode. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge, Season 37, Spies, Lies, and Allies, Episode 1. Now, this was a jam-packed premiere, so let's just jump right into it where this episode starts off, and that is all the U.S. competitors chained up to this, like, brick tomb, and they're waiting. Now, the international players are lined up, ready to run into the woods, grab a hammer with a key on the end to it, and keep running into the woods until they meet up with the U.S. competitors, and then they have to extract their partner and keep going with this first mission. Now the way to pick your partners is it's first come first serve so even if you make it into where the US competitors are you better find your partner quickly or they could be gone just like that. Now let's go over all the pairings that happen from this mission. We have Emmanuel and Casey, Tori and Kells, Kyle and Amanda, Nam and Michelle, Josh and Lauren, Logan and Anissa, Ashley and Huey, Corey and Bettina, Priscilla and Nelson. Priscilla actually wanted Corey originally, but Bettina was able to snipe him from under her. So then Priscilla had to go with her backup choice, which was Nelson, Gabo and Nani, Michaela and Renan, Corey L and Emmy, Devin and Tracy, Berna and CT, where CT was like hiding behind his bricks. Like, I don't know who he was waiting for or I guess he was waiting for somebody to actually look for him. So Berna was able to find him, Esther got Fessy, Tommy got Big T, and Tatcha was able to free Jeremiah. Now the whole point of this mission, which is called Compromise, is extracting your partner, freeing them, freeing their chains from this brick tomb. Then you have to carry your chains and your safe to a decoding station, open up your safe, grab the diamond that's inside, and run as fast as you can towards TJ. The first pair to cross the finish line with their diamond wins immunity, wins power in the form of the agency this season where they're gonna be able to send anybody that they want into the elimination. I have to say that I was surprised during this mission because for how many vets that there are in this game, how many years and seasons that they've played, and yet they were chained up to this brick tomb for who knows how long with all these painted numbers and letters on them. And most of them were just like, let's just break this thing open and let's grab our safe and run without even trying to memorize any of the numbers or anything on it. Like how long have you been doing the challenge and you just blow past such a huge clue right in front of your face? Let's move on to the results where the team that won this mission was Anissa and Logan. I have to give props to Anissa for winning the first First mission of the season in back-to-back -back seasons. She absolutely crushed it with her new partner, Logan. And then coming in second place was Michaela and Renan, which as we move through this review and recap, is more and more tragic that they couldn't get first place. Everybody else finishes this mission. Let's jump to the last place team, which is Huey and Ashley. And can I just say, I was rolling, laughing, seeing them interact with each other. This is their first time meeting. This is their first impression of each other in this very pressurized situation of the first mission. And they are just, they were just yelling at each other and it was rather funny to see them yelling at each other. They were able to free their diamond and get past the finish line and they were the last place team and Ashley was worried about a purge and even TJ was like dangling that there was possibly a purge. But really that was all for dramatics and to lead into a cliffhanger heading into a commercial break because when we came back, TJ was like, psych, there is no purge. Anissa and Logan won, head back to the house, get to know each other and then figure out people who you wanna send into the elimination. Now at the house, this is where everything just explodes in this episode. First I want to touch on Logan saying that Anissa reminds him of his grandmother, which I know Anissa is an OG and has been playing the game for a while, but that's all kinds of shady. Even though he meant it in a good way, it was still kind of shady. Speaking of Logan, it was Logan and Michelle's birthday and they decided to celebrate it in the house and that's when we see Devin pulling out his Speedo and showing off his gold and I, I, I. I think Devin Speedo here really set the mood and got people all randy. As we saw Ashley and Nelson getting all cuddly with each other throughout the night, we see Nani and Casey, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. We see Amanda and Fessy trying to get a sneaky snog, but Corey is there with eyes on everything. It feels like Corey is just like bored and is just roaming the house, looking for people, being messy, which he does. Speaking of Fessy, this is when he decides like this is a perfect time to have a conversation with Nelson about what happened last season. But this is not the right time nor place. Nelson does not want to have this conversation as he just lays into Fessy, which 
I was kind of excited to see. Nelson is just not backing down from this. And when we look into the aftermath post show, Nelson talks about this conversation saying that nothing was gonna get resolved from this conversation that night, that they weren't able to have this conversation away from the game during the off season. So when coming into the house, it was just all these emotions bubbling over that he needed to get off his chest. It was like an airing of grievances. So even though it seems tumultuous right now, we're gonna have to see how it plays out throughout the rest of the season. Now let's get into the main drama of the episode, the main tea that happens, and that is Michaela's list. Now in the edit, Emmy is sitting by the pool when Anissa and Tori come up to her and she mentions that Michaela has a list. And on this list, there are three categories people that she can trust, people that she can't trust, and people that she wants to send into the elimination. With this news, this instantly puts a giant target on Michaela's back, and this list gets a lot of screen time and air time. Everybody is wondering about this list. Even Anissa is going through Michaela's stuff, which I think is an evasion of privacy. Why not just go talk to her face to face? Even Michaela's like showing off lists that she's made about the teams. To me, that is crossing a line, but we move into the deliberation where coming into this deliberation, I think everybody's minds were set, especially the vets who were like, we're just gonna send in Michaela. And there's really nothing Michaela could have done to really save her game. For being this early in the game, the vets and everybody are just looking for some reason to target somebody. And this list was a perfect opportunity. Also, Michaela is super strong. She got second in the mission this episode. And it doesn't help that Emmy is adding to the fire. Michelle and Tommy are throwing her under the bus over and over again. So when it came down to the voting, Everyone voted for Michaela and Renan to get sent into the elimination, except for Michaela and Renan, of course. Michaela voted in for Corey, L, and Emmy, and Renan voted Josh and Lauren. Apparently, they had a fight off screen. We didn't see it, and I'm okay without seeing it. Now, speaking of the Aftermath post show, we learned some more details that the edit was a little bit misleading. So we learned that the original vote was actually going to be Emmy and Corey L being the house vote to be sent into the elimination. And Amanda wanted to use this information to get more dirt and tea on some of the other rookie teams. So she went to Emmy saying, hey, you're gonna be the house vote. Give me some dirt, give me some tea on any other team and maybe we can swap out the house vote. And this is where the information of Michaela's list comes into play. So the edit makes it seem like Emmy is just stirring the pot for drama's sake, but really there was a purpose behind sharing all this information about Michaela's list is to get the heat off of her rather than being sent into the first elimination. So knowing this context, it makes more sense to me why she would throw Michaela under the bus, but I'm very upset that Michaela was thrown under the bus. We've waited how long to see Michaela on the challenge, and now she's gonna be sent into the first elimination, possibly being sent home first? I completely understand where Michaela is coming from, wanting to be proactive in making lists, trying to gather up all the rookies to overthrow the vets. I think it's a really strong strategy. She just entrusted the information to the wrong people. We heard through the episode that Kells wanted to take a shot at the the vets. He was talking to Jeremiah and Coriel about that. And Esther also seemed to be wanting to be on Michaela's side, but it was so much momentum going towards Michaela. It was inevitable that she was going to be the house vote going into the first elimination. So Michaela and Renan are definitely going into the elimination. Now it's all up to Anissa and Logan as we head to the layer, which is the elimination grounds name for this season. And once there, this is where TJ throws a curveball and a twist for this season that the agency doesn't have the power to just send in a team into the elimination, but they have the power to send in anybody that they want, any one man and one woman to send into the elimination. They don't have to be partners with each other. It can be anybody that they want. This totally shifts everything because we see that Anissa is able to send out the first vote on any man that she wants, and she decides that she's going to vote in Corey L. To me, this signifies that they had a plan that they were gonna send in Emmy and Corey L as the team to go into the elimination against Michaela and Renan because the whole thing in the deliberation was Emmy versus Michaela, so they were gonna send them into the elimination. But Logan has different ideas as he doesn't wanna send in Emmy. He likes Emmy, so instead he votes to send in Michelle. I'm sure that wasn't the original plan, but this is too early to buck at your partner and also to a rookie and she's from Survivor, so it really doesn't make a difference to Anissa whatsoever. So 
she backs up her partner and sends in Michelle. So it is going to be Michaela and Renan going up against Corey L and Michelle in this elimination called Back Me Up. So in this elimination, everyone is tethered to their partner and the opposition. And what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to push them off of this ramp from the opposite of you. A lot of people in the episode and on Twitter were comparing this elimination to the Bananas backpack from Cutthroat, but honestly, this reminds me more of the Rampage elimination in Dirty 30 in episode nine. It's almost like exactly, except they're gonna be doing it in duos. One critique I have on this episode and specifically in this elimination is why is this being played in pairs? Like I understand if they were voting in a single team against another team, but honestly, if this is going to be majority a solo season besides in the missions where you're playing with your partner, if you can just pick any solo player to be sent into the elimination, why do you have to be paired up? I feel like this elimination would have been one, more gripping, and two, make more sense if it was played in solo matches where it was Michaela versus Michelle and Corey L versus Renan. I just don't get the point of the one made team from the mission going up against the two solo players now having to team up in the elimination for, for really no real reason that I can see. And if this elimination was a solo match between the women and the men, I possibly think that we could have gotten a different result at the end where maybe Michaela and Corey L would have won. I think that would have been another cool twist to add on this twist, but instead we got the two teams going up against each other, well, the one established team, and then the makeshift team that was put together because of the agency vote. In the Aftermath post show, Michaela talks about Renan's strategy was just being like give a good surge in the beginning and once he couldn't get Corey L off the ramp in like the first three seconds, he kind of gave up. We saw in the edit that his arm gets like stuck underneath everybody and it was really hurting him and we saw him in a sling at the end of the episode. So he was like being more cautious about his arm but it didn't look like he had that much fight in him. Really, it came down to Corey L versus Michaela, and Corey L was just able to win this outright. So at the end of the day, it is Corey L and Michelle winning, getting to stay in this game, where sadly Michaela and Renan are the first eliminated from the season. And now it is Michelle and Corey L to make a decision about their game where they can either be partnered with each other, stay with their original partners, or infiltrate anybody that they want to infiltrate. Michelle has a bit of a different decision to make though because she can't go really back with her own partner. As we hear TJ say that Nam hasn't been in the house and he had to leave the game. The rumors I heard was that there was a second quarantine. Nam was tested and he tested positive for COVID and he had to leave the game. It's really, really sad to see as I was really pulling for him. He had a really tough time in his first season and now it seems like he doesn't even get a shot to really play in his second season. I hope we get to see him again because this is just really, really tragic in my opinion to see him go out before the season even begins. But coming in as his replacement is Ed from The Circle and Michelle's looking like, okay, no. I'm gonna go infiltrate somebody else and she picks the vet, Devin. So the first new team of the season is Devin and Michelle. Then we have Corey L being able to infiltrate anybody he wants and he decides he's gonna pick Tori. Ed and Emmy had their partner stolen, so they are gonna be paired up with each other. And then we have Tracy and Kels who were sort of abandoned they are now going to be paired up with each other. So this episode ends where we have four new teams heading into episode two, but that is it for episode one. What do you think about this episode? Let me know that in the comments section below. Let me know anything and everything you felt about this episode. What do you think about them picking their partners? What do you think about the format? What do you think about the elimination? What do you think about the whole dramatics over Michaela's list? Was it overblown and overreacted or do you think that it was smart to take out Michaela this early? Are you sad to see her go? Are you sad to see Nam go? Let me know anything and everything down in the comment section below as I'm gonna pick a good handful of comments from this video's comment section and read them on tomorrow's Tiny Table Talk along with talking a lot about my early likes and dislikes. And I'm also gonna be breaking down the what's to come this season's trailer that was at the end of this episode. But as I said, let me know anything and everything you felt about this episode down in the comment section below. And while while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge 37 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.